Ladies and gentlemen, the Neverwinter team have allowed us to preview their upcoming class on the preview server, and if you happen to be one of the few individuals who have missed the memo, it is in fact the Bard. We can play music whenever we want now and annoy all our friends. That being said, before I start this video, you can probably tell that I'm surrounded by a bunch of blobs. This is an issue that the team is looking into and can happen to you regardless of if you have a high-end graphics card or not. If you have the unfortunateness of experiencing this, I am sorry, there is nothing that you can do about it at this time. Unfortunately, it makes the game look pretty bad. Like I said, they are working on it and try not to let it get to you too much because, well, I mean, it is preview after all. Okay. This video is just going to be a brief overview of the Bard, its two paragons and main functionalities of each paragon, as well as a few key things that I feel are worth mentioning, but I'm not going to go in depth into every power and every feat or showcase all of them. It's possible I may do this in the future, but for right now, we're just going to go with a general overview. So, the Bard has two paragons, one of which is Songblade and is a DPS paragon, and the other is Minstrel, a healing paragon, which you know that I am excited about because, well, uh, I'm a healer, you know. Both of these paragons can be overwhelming at first glance and first playthrough, but I do promise you the whole entire process of playing the Bard does get easier. A couple suggestions for when you're just starting is to go into your keybinds, and you'll see that there is an entire section for the performance mode, which is how you play your songs. You can rebind all of the notes. There are eight of them, and then also change the keybinds for how you use octaves and half steps, which you don't need to know anything about to play the class, just to clarify, don't freak out. Those are entirely just for free play mode which is if you press and hold tab, you can play whatever you want forever and nothing will happen except like music will play, you know. But other than that, nothing will happen. You will learn this in one of the very first quests, but pressing tab will put you into your regular performance mode where you can cast songs. I guess perform songs, sing songs. One of the main appeals of the Bard, aside from the song playing, is the fact that it includes buffs in both paragons. So for those of you who were looking forward to buffs being re-added into the game, well, you are in luck. It's nothing super overpowered or anything like that, but it is something. There are buffs, and some of them are pretty good. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. As I've hinted at already, you play songs by pressing tab to enter performance mode, and then you can use your number keys 1 through 8 by default to play different notes. And the songs that you will play... Think of them like encounter powers, but instead of just using QER to activate them, you have to actually play the song, the designated number sequence, in order to activate it. The vast majority of Bard's functionality comes from these songs. And like I said, they take some getting used to, they take some memorization, some repetition, and some just getting a feel for it and understanding how the whole thing works. So don't expect to fully understand it right away and don't expect to be an expert right away. That will just make you upset. Now I'm sure you're thinking, oh no, how will I ever remember all the numbers for all the different songs? Well, I have news for you. The Bard also comes along with four pin slots where you can pin these song sequences to your performance screen, and that way you can reference them at any time. Bard also comes along with one to two quick play slots, depending on your paragon, and you can see these here. These quick slots allow you to press the designated button and activate the song without having to type in the numbers. Pretty great. However, the one downside to that is that your songs generally have more functionality and more benefits when playing them manually versus when playing them in a quick play slot. Another thing to note is that you can dodge while in performance mode, so if you are playing a song in combat and you go, oh no, I'm about to be hit by this very strong attack, you can simply dodge out of the way. Great. But one downfall of being in the middle of everything while trying to play a song is that you will get knocked out of your performance mode if you happen to get CC'd. There are a couple of workarounds for this, but Generally, you should try to not be in the middle of everything while 
trying to play your songs. Unless you're me, in which case I just kind of do everything wrong and somehow manage to make it work. That's kind of my thing, I guess. Just a couple general thoughts before I go into a little bit more specifics. I personally find the Bard extremely fun and have played both Paragons extensively, and I may at some point in the near future, if time allows, make a more detailed review of both Paragons. So, take a look out for that. One last thing to note is that Bards have one less encounter and one less daily compared to all of the other classes. My guess is this is because bards have like eight songs that they can play as well as all the normal encounters and that kind of makes up for not having another encounter in daily in my opinion. Both paragons of the bard have very active play styles so expect to be doing a lot all the time or at least like 90% of the time. Okay now let's get into a little bit more specifics about each paragon. We'll start with the DPS paragon because I feel like that's what the majority of you may be more interested in. The DPS Paragon is called Songblade, and if you had any hopes that it would be a super OP high DPS Paragon, you can kindly just put those back in your pocket because it's not a super OP high DPS character. Bards can provide quite a few party buffs, and as a result, their DPS is currently around average. Of course, things can change because this is just preview, but as of right now, their DPS is nothing exceptional. As far as powers go, the three that you initially start out with, or the three that you unlock first, are actually very good and can take you through the rest of the leveling if you so choose. Choosing the Songblade Paragon will increase your performance meter by 50, giving it a maximum of 150. Becoming a Songblade also doubles the duration of your songs. Whenever you cast a song, it has a set duration and effects that are applied for that duration on top of its immediate effects. So, for example, if I cast the very first song that we have access to, my companion just randomly died in the Enclave, but it's fine. Uh, anyways, if I play the very first song I have access to, it's called Blaze Flamenco, you do a little spinny doodah and do some damage to the enemies around you, right? But, as you'll notice by the icon next to the performance meter, or rather on top of the performance meter, the song has a duration, which was 72 seconds. Choosing Songblade Paragon caused that to double because, initially, song's duration is only 36 seconds. But to continue on my example, as you saw, I did a little spinny doo da and did damage to the enemies around me, but in addition, while the song is active, it increases the magnitude of my attacks by 20 and converts the damage type to fire. And this will last for 72 seconds. So it's a pretty long, easy to keep up buff in addition to doing damage. And if, as you can see, if you click on any of the songs, you can see the number sequence that you need to play as well as its performance cost. Songs cost performance similar to how healing classes use their powers based on how much divinity they cost. The encounters still have regular cooldowns, but it is the songs that use that resource. There are ways to regenerate it better and manage it more effectively, and you'll discover those by checking out the class features and feats. Another thing to note about Songblade is this mechanic right here called Battle Harmony. What this does is if you play any song that grants a damage bonus to you, it will grant an additional damage bonus to party members if their damage matches the type of the song. And as you can see, all of the, the damage type of Blaze Flamenco in our example is fire damage. So if your allies in your party are using fire damage, their damage of those powers will be increased. And for those of you who are wondering, Songblade's forte stats are power, critical severity, and deflect severity. A few things that I think would be worth pointing out is my favorite encounter power, Ad Libidum, or Ad Libidum, however you want to pronounce it. Basically what this does is you do damage to an enemy and it also has a 50% chance to allow you to use it again without cooldown. And it can trigger up to three times in a row, so you can really just go bam bam bam, similar to that one fighter power that had charges. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it, if you have played a fighter, you might know what I'm talking about. That one is my favorite, especially used in conjunction with a feat that I will get to in a minute. A couple examples of ways to manage your performance meter and have an easier time casting songs are the class feature Musician's Flow, 
What this does is it gives you a 50% chance to reduce the cost of any song by 50% if you're casting it manually and not in a quick play slot. Another example is the daily encore, which allows you to activate the song that you played most recently, but it doesn't cost any performance. That can be very helpful in a pinch, specifically in the DPS Paragon, and you'll probably use it a lot while leveling after you unlock it. Next up is my favorite song, Ballad of the Hero, and the reason it's my favorite song is because while it's active, you deal additional damage to the enemy, and then whenever you cancel it, because it has a special effect of changing perform to Hero's Finale, whenever you activate the finale of that power, it goes BAM and gives a giant burst of damage to the target and, you know, it's fun. So that's why I like it. Okay, now let's talk about some of the benefits that Songblade can give to others in your party. I know we've talked about a little bit of the damage bonus already, but we're starting to get into the feats and a few of these are actually quite good. This first feat pair can benefit either the healers in your group or the tanks, depending on which one you pick. If you pick the healing one, it causes Rejuvenating Carol to have an additional effect where it restores 100 Divinity or Soul Weave or Performance to any healers in your group. That can be very useful in a pinch, specifically in difficult situations. Now, if you were to pick the tank one, what that does is whenever you manually play a song, whenever you have a tank in your general vicinity, whenever you attack things, you'll give 50% of the threat that they generate to the tank. And this can be very useful for helping the tank maintain aggro in dungeons, preventing yourself from accidentally gaining aggro. And it's just very helpful for tanks. Next up, in terms of party-related benefits, comes the third feat choice, both of which give bonuses to the allies, but in different ways. Ballad Call of Vosi... Vos? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce anything, as you... If you know me, you know that already. But if you play Ballad of the Hero or Ballad of the Witch manually, party members around you are given either increased damage, decreased damage taken, or outgoing healing, depending on which role they are. And then it ends whenever you activate the finale portion of those powers. Your other option is to cause the closest party member to you to have 10% increased damage, 10% less damage taken, and 10% outgoing healing. This is something that is constantly applied to whoever is the closest to you. So if you really wanted to stand on top of someone the entire dungeon, you could guarantee that they always have that buff. If someone else moves closer to you than your intended target, they will get it instead. It's not something that you can control, it's purely based on how close your party members are to you. And now I'm just going to talk about a couple of the feats that I actually really like, and those are Redoublement and Performer. Performer being my actual favorite. Now, Redoublement requires a little bit of explanation, because if I just read this to you, it's probably not going to make any sense if you haven't checked out the Bard's powers yet. So what it allows you to do is it allows you to use other encounters between strikes of Ad Libitum and Volti Suido. That probably doesn't make sense to you, but those are both encounter powers. Ad Libitum is the one we talked about earlier that can activate up to three times, and it just does damage in front of you. And Volti Suido is the final encounter power that deals damage to all the enemies in front of you. And you can also use that two more times. So it's basically like really spammy. And if you, with this feat, if you use other encounters in between strikes of those two encounters, the ones that you use in between those two encounters will have 10% increased damage, which is pretty nice if you ask me. Arg you can argue that martial performance might be better just because it gives you extra damage to all of your attacks whenever certain songs are in effect. Uh, but we're not talking about what is the best here, at least not right now. We are talking about what I like. <laughs> now, last but not least, my favorite feat, Performer. And the reason I like this is similar to the reason we talked about in the previous feat. We talked about the two encounters that you can spam multiple times and you go back and forth between the two, but with Performer, your at-wills and encounters can make one of your encounter powers randomly be able to be cast regardless of their cooldown. And it's called an improvised encounter because it's like, poof, off cooldown, you can use it and improvise and do this instead because it wasn't originally planned. Improvised versions are a little bit weaker 
and don't affect the cooldown that is in effect for the power itself. So as you may be able to imagine, this allows for quite a bit of spam if you have the right kind of rotation and luck going and it can be pretty fun. That was the important part of the feat, but I might as well talk about the rest of it. Every time you use an improvised encounter, you gain a stack of playing to the audience, and then whenever you reach 30, your daily encore, remember we talked about how that allows you to activate your most recent song without using performance, it changes to something called Grand Stand. And whenever you activate Grandstand, it doubles the damage or healing of the triggered song. So it works the same as Encore, but instead of just playing the same song, it plays the same song, but with double damage or double healing. The only thing it doesn't affect is the finale damage for the two ballads. And by the way, for you people who like to PvP, I would like to introduce you to the Advancing Parry class feature. It causes one of your at-wills and two of your encounters to increase your deflect chance by 25%. I just assume that's something that would be good for PvP. I mean, I don't really know. I don't PvP. Anyways, let's talk about Minstrel now. Minstrel is my favorite paragon. Just a little suggestion before I even talk to you about it. At some point, please try to DPS with Minstrel because it may not be the strongest, but it is very fun. And I'll explain why in about two seconds. So, as a minstrel, your performance meter increases from the standard 100 to 1000, but songs still cost the same. This means that you can cost many songs in quick succession, and it becomes like a finger flurry race on the keyboard as you try to cast as many things as possible. And it can, this is why I say Minstrel in particular can be pretty overwhelming because you have so much opportunity and possibility for casting different songs and keeping things up and healing people. And it takes a lot of getting used to. It took me a little while to become comfortable with the Paragon, but as I said, it is my favorite now, but I am a healer, so that should have been obvious. Minstrel is also kind of confusing at first glance, especially if you aren't familiar with the Bard, because it's very different from the healing paragons that we are accustomed to. Probably the most familiar part is that it increases your performance to 1000, like I said, and that's essentially your divinity for casting healing and other party effects. But on the flip side of that, probably the most unfamiliar part is that there are no encounters and no dailies that heal directly. So what does that mean? You have to play songs. The good thing about Minstrel is that you get a second quick play slot instead of just one. But the bad thing about that is, well, it's not really bad, but it's more beneficial to play the songs manually, but in a pinch it can be useful to use the quick play slots. That being said, I'm going to talk about a few nert, nert worthy, I just made a new word, noteworthy things about the Minstrel Paragon, and then we shall conclude. First and foremost, if any of you remember how Into the Fray used to work on Guardian Fighters back in the day, it would make everyone go zoom zoom, yes? And that was especially fun in Tomb of the Nine Gods because there are long staircases there. Okay, now that we're on the same page, let me introduce you to the class feature called Vamos Sala, which I think means come on everyone or let's go everyone in Spanish. I just pulled that out of my head. I didn't actually look it up, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Anyways, what does Vamos Sala do? Well, our very first song we're introduced to, Blaze Flamenco, you know, the spinny doodah with the damage. Whenever you cast it, it increases the movement speed slash run speed of all the people around you by 20% outside of combat and 10% in combat. Uh, basically, it makes you go zoom zoom, it makes you go very fast, and it's very fun. Personally, whenever I get to areas where this may be useful, I hurry up, slot it in really fast, cast the song, and then move it back to the class feature that I had before, because you don't need the class feature slotted for the effect to be in effect after you activate it. I hope they don't change that. There are quite a few things I would like to see adjusted on Minstrel, but that's not one of them. Okay, now that we've talked about the zoom zoom buff, we got to talk about another option for not having to type as many numbers, and that is something called delayed play. What that does is you activate the encounter and then you play a song, but the song doesn't activate, it becomes stored, and then you're able to activate it as if it were a, a traditional encounter, 
the next time you want to use it. And the song will stay there until you either log out or change zones. Delayed play is very useful. Earlier on, I would say, whenever you're not as familiar with the Paragon in the songs, I used it whenever I leveled as a minstrel, which was very fun, by the way. I used it in conjunction with a feat called Vamp, which was intensely fun. I don't know if intensely fun is a valid description, but it was. It makes managing the numbers a little bit easier because you can prepare in advance a few of the numbers that you would need to press. Minstrel does come packaged with a way to restore performance, but in my opinion, the way that it works right now is not great. You can move while you cast it. It's called Baseline. You channel it, similar to how Channel Divinity used to be, but you don't gain any performance back until you cancel the power or the power ends, and it only does up to 200 after 10 seconds of channeling, which is a bit not great in my opinion. I have given my feedback about this and several other powers slash abilities, so I'm hopeful that it will be adjusted in the future, but as of right now, it's not the greatest. Now, I know we talked about how Minstrel didn't have any healing encounters or dailies, at least ones that healed directly, but they do have an at will, and that is called Arpeggio, or Arpeggio, I guess. I'm going with Arpeggio because of reasons. My name is actually a pun off of this power, and I'm very proud of it. So please laugh, please go haha, -ha and applaud me for it, because it was great. The Atwill healing is pretty decent. Reminds me of, you know, every other healer's Atwill power. But it also has a pair of feats that go along with it, and those change its effectiveness. And there's also a class feature that goes along with the Atwill power that also changes its functionality. However, both of those can't be active at the same time, and they kind of... And if you were to slot both the class feature and the feat at the same time, the feat would be cancelled out and only the class feature would be in effect. So don't slot them both at the same time. But haha, -ha, joke's on you, you have to! If you wanted to use the class feature anyways. Because you, the first feet pair, you have to pick one of those two feet. But if you happen to want to use Arpeggio Fortissimo, the feat becomes useless. Let me explain why. So the class feature Arpeggio Fortissimo reduces the magnitude of Arpeggio, it increases the performance cost, and then turns it into an AoE that affects all the allies close to you. Sounds great in a pinch, perhaps? Nice for topping people off in certain situations. But then you go to the feats. We have crescendo and diminuendo, which are our music terms. These also affect arpeggio, but what do they do? They affect the magnitude of it, just like the class feature does. And of course, you can't have two things changing the magnitude of a power at the same time, because one of them has to be active and one of them has to be inactive, right? So crescendo allows you to increase the magnitude of arpeggio for every three seconds while you channel it, and it can go up to a maximum of 425. This feat, I feel, needs some adjustment. It would take too long to reach maximum magnitude, and it's not very often that you'll find yourself channeling this power to begin with. Now, Diminuendo, on the other hand, starts off strong, just like how Crescendo starts at the bottom and goes upwards, a diminuendo is the opposite of that, where it starts strong and then weakens and goes down. So diminuendo causes Arpeggio to have increased magnitude of 500 at the beginning, and then as you channel it, it's decreased to a minimum of 250, and then it will reset five seconds after you stop channeling. Now this one I find extremely useful and picked this one up all the time during testing, and that's because for the most part, I'm only using Arpeggio to right-click once and not channel it so it makes it very strong. Feels very good. If I need to channel it, I can, and I get the best effectiveness at the beginning, which is when I need it right away, but Crescendo just takes too long. Anyways, for the time being at least, I would like something to be done about the fact that you can't have both of these things that we just talked about active at the same time, because it doesn't exactly feel great that if you want to use a class feature, it makes one of your feats useless. But for the time being, just be knowing, just be knowing of that, and don't be alarmed if you notice something's not working the way that you feel it should. Okay, now that we're done talking about that, we need to talk about a couple of the encounters, one of which being Serenade and the other being... I guess I already talked about the other ones. Oh, Flourish. Flourish is a general encounter that can be used by either Paragon, but it becomes more useful for the healing side, in my opinion, and that's because 
it can increase the healing potency of your next encounter power or song by 50%, and that's a lot. Very useful to have something that increases your healing output, especially because Bard's healing output is not exceptional. It's not bad, but it's not exceptional. Now, the other encounter that I would like to mention is Serenade, and this functions similar to the marks that the other three healers have, but it has quite a few drawbacks, and I don't use it as a result of those drawbacks. But on paper, it is actually quite good. You just mark your target, and that makes your heals more effective on them by 5%. But you can also hold down and release Serenade, and that causes your heals to be increased by 50% on that target, which is whoo, big, big heal, good, yes. And most of the time, this would probably be on the tank. But a few drawbacks to this power are you cannot unmark someone. The person has to either die or you have to mark someone else. You can't, once you activate it, you can't not have a mark. Unless you die too, I suppose. So you can't unmark someone, and I'll explain why this is an issue in a moment. Targeting on it is not great. If there's an enemy in the way, it will miss, essentially. You won't get a mark, and it will go on cooldown. Which I don't believe that is intended, and I'm sure it will be fixed. But I'm just talking about how it works currently so that you're not like, oh my god, this is awful. And the third thing I don't like about it is actually another bug, and that is that if you tap to target someone and it doesn't work, it goes on cooldown. You're supposed to be able to change targets without incurring the cooldown. But that is known and it will likely be fixed soonish. Okay, now that we've talked about Serenade, let me elaborate on the reason why not being able to unmark someone is bad. And that falls down to Defender's Minuet Song, which is one of the best songs that Minstrel has in terms of healing, and that's just because it's a 2000 magnitude heal for the person with the least amount of hit points. It's easy to cast manually, it's easy, it's nice to cast in a quick slot, I keep mine in a quick slot just for emergencies, but if you see the second part here, this is the reason why I don't use Serenade primarily. And that's because if you have someone marked by Serenade, it will force the heal to go on them instead of the person with the least hit points. Two reasons why this is bad. One, you can't unmark someone with Serenade. So once you have somebody marked with Serenade, you can no longer use this power, this song, to heal the person with the least HP, which really, really sucks in emergencies. I consider defend Defender's Minuet to be an emergency button, and it can't be that if it's forced to have a different functionality whenever you use a certain encounter power. I would like for it to have both functionalities, so my suggestion for it to have both functionalities is to use the common mechanic of songs functioning slightly differently when played manually versus quick play slot. So if you have it slotted in your quick play slot, it should automatically heal the person Person with the lead stage P. But if you play it manually, it could then target the serenade target if there is one. That way you still have both functionalities, but it doesn't completely ruin the main effect of the main appeal of the song itself. Okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Let's move on now. I'm just going to quickly go over each of the healing options that Minstrel has because that's pretty important to know. The first song, you get it early on, both Paragons Rejuvenating Carol. That's simply a kind of weak heal over time. In my opinion, it needs to be buffed a little bit because it doesn't feel quite as useful as it should be. Next, Defender's Minuet. We talked about that already. Big heal for a person with least HP. Next up, Warding Carol. This is your cleanse and it removes one negative condition from everyone around you, but it also has the added effect of continually removing negative effects for 18 seconds. I find that to be extremely strong, and I wouldn't be surprised if the duration is reduced in the future. Next is Aurora Fantasia. Now, you may read this and be like, but Silver, there's no heal here. Oh, but there is, and it can come quite in handy, and that is the finale portion of Fantasia. It's something that drains your performance over time, but whenever you've activated Fantasia, your attacks deal extra damage and they heal nearby allies. So it's kind of similar to how Astral Seal used to work on Cleric, except instead of your allies being healed when they attack something, your allies get healed when you attack something. The magnitude is not super high, but it is a nice benefit to having to drain performance to channel this. And the finale of Fantasia 
allows you to heal for 400 magnitude. I have found use for this in dungeons where you have the hypo mechanic, as most people call it, where everyone has to stack together. Whenever the arrows pop up, I have this song active, and then as soon as the damage hits, just hit tab, cast the finale, and then there's a burst heal for everyone, which is very nice. Next is Sheltering Etude, which it's essentially a safety net for your allies whenever they fall below 50% HP. While the song is active, if they do fall below half health, they'll get a 600 magnitude heal, which is pretty nice. It's kind of like a little emergency buffer in a way that can help you realize that someone is needing assistance and gives you a little bit more time to actually provide that assistance. Now the last two songs may confuse you for a little while and that's because they will remain locked until you have a certain feat slotted and that feat is called Gambler. I'll go over that in a moment but I want to touch on just a few more things that I find notable. We've already talked about a couple of the class features and feats but one feat that I really would like to talk about is Sudden Muse and that's because it's very good and you should look at it. So what Sudden Muse does is it gives you a certain muse, a different one every three seconds in combat, with a 10% chance to activate. Of course, can't be all the time. And depending on which of the muses you get, you will gain additional effects for different songs of yours. So if you happen to get Healer's Muse, if you play Defender's Minuet or Sheltering Etude, you get increased magnitude, 25% increased magnitude. If you get Warden's Muse, the next time you play Rejuvenating Carol or Warden Carol, the duration is increased by 100%. It's doubled. And then Fighter's Muse is probably one of my favorite ones to get, even though it's a lot more situational. The next time you play Blaze Flamenco or Fantasia, it doesn't cost any performance. Now this can only happen once every 20 seconds, but I found that it's very useful to have and kind of forces you, not necessarily forces you, but allows you to adjust your rotation and style of play like while you're playing. And I find it another layer added to the active play style of Bard. And it is a little bit more memorization that you'll need to do, but it is something that will come with repetition and practice, of course. And um, it's nice. Of course, the opposite feat to this is great too. It's actually one of my favorite feat pairs in this entire game. And that's because both of them are very good in their own respective ways. Now, Vamp reminds me of vampires, yeah? But if you're using delayed play, which we talked about earlier, allowing you to store songs, whenever you have Vamp, it causes delayed play to sometimes not clear the stored song whenever you have Vamp's effect active. So that means that you can use a song in delayed play twice without having to put in any numbers. And I'm sure that's very appealing to some of you. I used this feat, as I said, while I was leveling as a minstrel, and I found it very useful, and it was pretty great. But vamp in general is really good for when you're not as familiar with the numbers and can't quickly input them in combat necessarily. It can be used in later content as well, I believe. Now lastly, the last thing I want to talk about is this feat called Storyteller, and that's because it's my favorite feat out of all of them. It was really hard to pick a favorite, but this is, it takes the cake and I'll explain why. So whenever you manually play songs, you're giving a buff to party members that are close to you depending on their role. I believe we talked about this a little bit earlier with some other feature. Essentially, every time you're granting Storyteller's Boon to your party members, if they are a DPS, they get 5% increased damage dealt. If they are a tank, they get reduced damage taken by 5%. And if they are a healer, it increases their outgoing healing by 5%. And this stacks up to three times, so you can get up to 15% of those bonuses for every time if you keep Storyteller up. The only thing is it does not affect you yourself, the caster, which I find unfortunate, and I wish it did, even if it was only at 50% effectiveness. But just this is a very good buff and probably one of the better ones that Minstrel has. One last thing that I will talk about is Minstrel's Paragon Daily Curtain Call. This requires a little bit of management, but once once again, once you have repetition, you will know. And all Curtain Call does is it cancels your songs and then gives them effects based on what song was canceled. So depending on the songs that you have active, you can give everyone in your group 100 action points 
a big heal, reduce their damage taken by 10%, or give them an 800 magnitude shield. Or all of those things, if you happen to have all of those songs active, you can activate all of those buffs at the same time. I like Curtain Call a lot, although I just generally feel like I need to save it all the time and I don't use my dailies enough, but I like it. The Gambler feat, which is the opposite of Performer, would require a bit more explanation and I may go more in depth into that whenever, if I do a more in depth video of the Paragons. I most definitely will do one for Minstrel. I'm not too sure about Songblade because, you know, I am a healer after all and I find myself much well versed in the, the way of playing Minstrel than I am with Songblade, but we'll see. That being said, that is going to be it for this video. I wanted to keep it as concise as possible, but Unfortunately, there's just so much new stuff that it's kind of hard to cram everything into a small time frame, obviously, based on the video length. Also, I just want to applaud myself a little bit because yesterday I learned that Mod 21 was going to preview tomorrow, which is today. I kind of panicked because I thought there was absolutely no way I could have any kind of decent video out by then, but I managed to make it happen anyway somehow, and here we are. So good job me. Okay, thank you for watching or listening or whatever. Please keep your eye out for future videos from me. There will be some this weekend. There may also be a live stream this weekend. So we'll play some Bard, perhaps. If there is one, it will be Sunday, uh, late morning, early afternoon, Eastern time. I will tweet about it, post on community tab. So have a little look-see. And I'm gonna jam out over here and play songs while you all listen to the outro or watch the outro. So um, let me know what you think about Bard if you've tested it out or if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them and I will do my very best to give you the best answer that I possibly can. I'm gonna go now. My voice hurts and it's late and I need to have this edited in about 40 minutes, which is impossible, but I will try anyways. Okay, bye. Hey, it's me, your friend Greg the Bard again. I was just wondering, how much do you actually know about bards. Oh, nothing. Wow. You know, I've seen a lot of people come through here lately who just don't seem to know anything about me or what I do. I need to do something about that. Oh, you know what? I'll just write a song. It'll be easy to remember, and there's no way anyone will not know about bards. One, two, three, four. Life as a bard is not very hard. I play throughout the day and dream the night away. I buff till the end and mend my friends so that one day I'll be remembered in some way. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> that was great, wasn't it? I came up with that in about five minutes. It'll be the new hit single. Oh, right, and this dimension doesn't have hit singles yet. Sorry. I'm just gonna leave now. Bye bye